It's Brian Albert, everybody. Silver Sun Pickups. Three songs from Neck of the Woods. Uh, they worked with a guy named Dave Cooley on their first two records. He just worked with a different dude for Neck of the Woods, though, named Jack Knife Lee. Yeah. What inspired the producer change, and how was working with a different dude for the first time? Working with a different dude? dude yeah. I never thought of him as a dude. That was a very aggressive dude. way you said it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. As a man, his yeah. name is Jack Knife. Yeah, his name is Jack Knife. His name is Garrett, actually. <laughs> Real name is Garrett. He's very sweet. On his Grammy, it says Jackknife. It does. Does yeah. it say Garrett Jackknife? I think it, I think if you get a Grammy, that's officially your name. You can oh, you can use that as an ID. It's cute because he just has his Grammy sitting there, and all he does is the kind of guy he is. He just uses it for percussion. Like he takes like sticks <laughs> and bangs on it and something like that. Actually, I think I think that U2 Grammy is on the record. Yeah, it's actually. Like, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. But we uh, we were writing the record in a way that was different than we did previously and we thought it was time to have different battles. You know what I mean? Like Dave is a brother, really. He's, he's amazing and, he, and I think we're the only band in the world that cut, called him up to get his blessing <laughs> when we moved on. We're like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and he was like, no, it's a, I think it's a good, good idea to move on to somebody else. And, and so that's what happened. But we already knew Garrett from a, a friend's band that were in LA and he was producing them and we sang background vocals on the record and, and he's just a mad man and we really loved it. Yeah, and he brought a certain, what we thought he would bring to it, he, he really brought to it, yeah. insanity. Yeah, there's not really a single song on Neck the Woods that clocks in at like less than four and a half minutes. I don't know what our problem is. Yeah, is that like something you do on purpose or does it just no, happen? No, just we, every time, we, I remember we write a song and we look at the clock and go, damn it. <laughs> We all, we, they, they seem like three minutes to us. I don't know. I guess when we write it, we'll write one when we write one. Yeah. You know? When we hear radio edits, we trip out. Like, oh, wow, that's strange. You know, it just feels like you got caught like having sex or something. Like, it's just uncomfortable. <laughs> it feels like blue balls. <laughs> but whatever. Yeah. Just Am I like, right, people? Just like blue balls, yeah. Doesn't it feel like blue balls, Nick? Yeah, that's what it feels like. Like blue balls. Yeah. I can totally relate to I that. I know. When you get the record back for like the first time and you hear it in its whole mastered state, is it something like you're stoked on or you just want to go back and just be like, why didn't we change that one thing in that song? No, I mean, I, I think it gets to be a certain point where it, it does start to sound like binary, you know, just ones and zeros and you, you do lose your perspective a little bit. But um, no, because I think, I think you could do that all day long. And you know, they always talk about movies, like they're never finished, they just get taken away. I think it's... We've all seen Star Wars up updates, and yeah. sometimes it's better yeah. to leave them as they are. You, uh, shh, the girl brought up the Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like you look, look what happens if you keep it, giving it to someone. They'll just keep tweaking it and screw it up. I think things have to be taken away, and of course, we, you know, you can, you can all, we could work on that thing forever, but it's, it's nice when it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we just heard it for the first time. Uh, where we got to hear it clearly, you know, like, okay, and the way we are, we're always like, oh, it's not, it's not, that's not so bad. That's not the worst record. <laughs> it's all right. One thing I'm curious about, Neck of the Woods, it's kind of a creepy title. You got, like, a creepy house going on in the cover. It's cool. You got it's some pretty. creepy hand gestures. I do, on. don't I, right there? Yeah, you're like... I used to be a freestyle writer. <laughs> you look like you can break dance pipe. Yeah. Yeah. Saw Zoolander five times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One thing I'm curious about, like, if Neck of the Woods was a soundtrack for a feature film, mm. what type of movie would it be? It would be an 80s one that hasn't yeah. existed yet, and hopefully it would star Matthew Broderick and Judd Nelson in Breaking, uh, Breaking Bad. Wow, that'd be cool. <laughs> Breakfast Club, like that character. Yeah, sort of a war games kind of, I don't know. Say anything. Say, yeah, war games and say anything. <laughs> like, yeah, John Cusack, <laughs> would you like to play a game? <laughs> yeah, that's very topical. Ask your parents, YouTubers. Yeah. I might have seen that movie. Dad, what's War Games? <laughs> what's up, Breakfast Club? Yeah. In sociology class in high school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just did that. That's awesome. Man. We study on things. Man, that is exactly what people think we do. Molly Ringwald. That's, like, that's like a stereotype of what people think we do in California. Like, oh, it is. It's happening in California. You, that's so rad. What'd yeah. you learn? Uh, I learned that Judd Nelson was being a douche in the movie, but it was funny. Wow. And, I didn't uh, see him as a douche. I thought I misunderstood. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's, yeah. that's how my teacher portrayed it. He yeah. was also the football coach, though. Yeah. So he was just sort of doing it. Apparently, also, marijuana gives you superpowers. Yeah. Where you can blow glass with your breath. 
Yeah. yeah. And then like the weird girl, she gets a makeover, but weird she's executed. Which she's one? There's two. <laughs> well, this is Molly Ringwald, then the other girl gets a makeover. This is riveting. Yeah. That's yeah. what happened. That's Ali Sheedy. Love, everybody. Except for Ali Sheedy looks better before. The I know. Yeah. The why thing. on earth? <laughs> Who? What happened there? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Molly Ringwald. Want to talk about Short Circuit next? <laughs> <laughs> Number Johnny Five. <laughs> Also, I mean, you guys have your three albums in now. Um, uh-huh. What do you do with like? So that was the answer to that question. Yeah, by the way. short circuit. <laughs> yeah. What is that? I don't know. I saw Red Asphalt, you know, when I was taking driver oh. tests. That movie happened too. But one. um, uh, classic. Yeah, when you got like a sixty-minute set, how do you mix it up now for like the fans that you know they come, they want to hear a song off Pykele? We're figuring like, it out. Yeah. You know, uh, we, well, we're changing it. We've only done it a few times now, and there's a lot. There's a lot of material. Yeah, we're gonna switch some songs out each time. And- yeah, um, yeah, we'll figure it out. I mean, probably we'll just play it till we collapse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We like it, it's it's been really fun uh, to dive in between all the stuff, you know. Because well, I remember that from Swoon because that was the only, that was our second record and it's the first time we had a lot of material and we got to experience the f- the earlier material different. Like it, it it had more. I don't know. Like it. We almost put it back in, a, in where it was supposed to be because we, we started to screw with it too much. We, we, we weren't really connecting to it. And then when we came out with another record and started playing those songs, we, underst- we understood what, was, what we liked about the older songs. And that's what's sort of happening again like now. Mm-hmm. With the new stuff, we're really kind of understanding. It sounds funny because you're like, with the new stuff, we finally know how to play our old stuff. <laughs> no, but yeah, it just gives it a nice perspective, you know, and it's, it's, it keeps it mentally. I don't know why, but it, it's fun to. I get excited when oh, okay, and we're, we're jumping back over here. Especially Pykel. Pykel's a fun one to, to dip into. And yeah, yeah. I also got some fan questions uh, on the internet. One person wanted to know what you guys miss about the 1990s. Huh? Well, uh, what we miss about it? Yeah. Was Diapers. It? I don't know. <laughs> what, what do I miss about the 90s? Was it Princess Bride from 1990s or was that 80s? I mean, Princess Bride. <laughs> Princess Bride. Yeah. Mid-90s? I think that's I from the 80s. 90s? 80s. Anywho. I don't know. What do I, I miss about I'm... the 90s? <laughs> My slip-on vans. But I'll probably get another pair soon, so I won't miss them anymore. Hmm. I am uh, uh, Clinton. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That was a good one. So Clinton yeah. and slip-on so, and vans. People don't know this, but we're, there's a drinking game going on here in the YouTube office. Every time I say something serious, everyone takes a shot. Right? Yeah, while well, we're at the, See, the camera's office. going. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing about YouTube <laughs> presents. What's your favorite YouTube video? Oh. Ever. Oh. Uh, YouTube video. You know what? The first one that comes to mind. Was... We were we were just talking about that bake a pretty cake. Oh, that's that's, that's probably the bomb. That weird, <laughs> screwed up kids show from Iceland that has Little John rap in the middle of it. <laughs> that had. I was going for about there four, was some talent straight, there. No, four straight months yeah. <laughs> of like, dude, you got to check this out. Like, <laughs> we had a whole, I remember we had a whole, or, I can't remember who we were on tour with, but everybody at the end of that was like, if you want to bake a pretty cake, bake through, bake through, amazing. Yeah, that's a good one. Give me pizza, it's pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. You guys all had some tour antics going with Cage the Elephant Literally, and Manchester yeah. Orchestra. One of the last times you played here, you got nannered on stage. Basically, yeah. when somebody comes on stage in a banana suit <clears throat> and just messes with you, yeah. what's sort of the craziest thing that's happened with like Cage the Elephant on tour with oh, those dudes? Oh, 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 I don't know. He'll get mad. <laughs> I have a picture in my phone that I use anytime Cage gets a little rowdy, and I would just do that, and they they calm down because they pranked us with a like Silence of the Lambs like photo, and they put it up on our all over our like scan pictures of it all over our um, stage. Oh. And so we're like, this is the dumbest prank in the world because we just started handing them all out to fans. <laughs> and this is basically one of the guys, you know, doing the, you know, put the lotion in the basket kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, I, then I Twittered it. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, uh, we eventually took it down after a lot of begging, but I still have it in my phone. So it's like, I, he, he knows, he knows, yeah. Jared. The drummer. Now, another band you guys toured with in 2010, uh, Against Me, making a lot of news lately. Oh, yeah. Um, 
Mr. Tom Gable, a friend of yours, friend of yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just came out. He's, he's a great person. Yeah. He uh, came out transgender last night, yeah. getting a sex chain surgery. Uh, it's, I, yeah, yeah, well, he's building up. Yeah. Oh, she's building up to that. I mean, I just saw that and thought, this is an amazing person, yeah. you know? And even in the, the worlds that Against Me swims in, too, it's like, that, it's real brave. And the thing that made me sad was to think that there was hanging out with Tom he, he wasn't comfortable, you know. It, it, that's, it, that's, that's a scary thing to think that you and your, your body is a cage, you know. And my heart broke a little bit, and I'm feeling really <laughs> happy, happy. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing, you know. It has a, it's a brave person. Yeah, it's great to see all the support for, uh, for Tom Gable so yeah. far. Yeah, that, against me, They're family. Yeah. So were some pickups. They're going to be on tour probably all year. Playing songs from the new album, Neck of the Woods. Probably. Probably. Yeah. And into the next year yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, just dropped. It's in stores now. It's Brian, Nikki. Yeah. Thanks. This is U2 Presents. I'm Dallas from uh, San Francisco's Lab 105. Mm. And uh, they are the Silver Sun Pickups. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>